finally got one. Oh, it feels good too. Oh, it's a big one. In. Luckily on this skeeter you just hit a little button over here on the side, plugs it right up. Welcome back to the channel everybody. We're here at my nemesis lake, Ray Roberts place where I've probably caught a total of five or six bass but there's a lot of other species in this lake it is summer there's white bass there's crappie maybe even some catfish I really want to try to figure out all of them so let's get out on the water let's get to dangling I had to help one of the fellow boaters out at the boat ramp here today you know, everybody has issues, especially early summer. You know, I forgot to put my plug in this morning. So, could be you. Always help the person because when it comes time or you need help, somebody else is going to be there for you. That's how karma works. So, here's, here's what I'm thinking here today. This is a huge body of water. I've been trying to break down little sections at a time and, and figure some things out. I know the, the bass are mostly offshore right now. There's tons of trees in this lake. We're going to start off four bass, trying to catch some of those up in the shallows and probably try to use the electronics to find some deeper fish as we go along. And then I've got a few crappie rods and we're going to try to get in some, uh, some standing timber, try to catch some crappie as well. But today's a big day. You may notice I am not holding the camera right now. It's because there's a tall bearded man behind the camera holding the camera. I know a lot of you were asking about uh, the editor and slash maybe camera guy position will somebody on it right now so I'd like, like to welcome Colin to the team here LFG Outdoors and it's time to roll we're gonna have a good time today don't forget your funny hat it's gonna be a scorcher Got one. I think. Little bass. It's like a spotted bass. It is a spotted bass. There you go. What are you doing up here, boy? Woo! Got me too. Why is that on you? First fish of the day. Hey, that's ahead of schedule for my Ray Roberts history. Normally I. You know, about one every uh, every eight hours. A little spotted bass. Everybody wondering what's the difference between a spotted bass and a, and a largemouth bass? They're, spotted bass are normally really aggressive, usually in schools together. Sometimes they're alone, but you can see these little stripes right here. They have these little stripes, really defined. That lateral line that goes down, that bar, is pretty defined. If you feel their tongue, they've got a little patch of roughness. It feels like sandpaper. So that's how you tell. We have them in Texas, and they're not very big. Like, the biggest one I've ever caught is three pounds here. But I've caught them over five pounds in some other states like Alabama, on the Coosa River, and other places that have really, really big, really fat spotted bass. We just don't have them here in Texas. Oh, there's one. That little, uh, oh, he came off. Little, little tutor. Well, that second fish I had on back there, I think it was another spotted bass too. So there's some small spotted bass roaming around that point. 
not ready to give up on bass yet. I want to explore some more things. There's a lot of points, tank dams, some offshore stuff. Uh, I don't think we're going to be on a shallow topwater bite here this morning. I think we've missed that. But I do want to try a little bit more cranking and maybe do a little bit of flipping in, in some of that brush and also just island around some of these deep point areas and see if there's anything out there. I noticed a large group of boats out in the middle. That usually means good groups of white bass are out here as well. So there's a lot more to explore on this thing. I could fish this, this lake for 10 years and really not ever you know, get on the juice. That's how big it is and how, how fast it is. And it's got a lot of fishable water, which is great. We're here to dial it in on everything. Anything you got. Two lakes that are my nemesis, Lake Conroe, and this one right here, Lake Ray Roberts. I'm trying, I'm trying to figure this puppy out. Let's go get, get some more bass. Grab my jig. Pitch it into these trees. I just want to know if there's anything living in here. Okay. Yeah, I want to. I want to explore a little bit. Got to see more of this lake. Right now we just came over some uh, some foundation, like some old, I guess house foundations out here on the point, not too far from where we were cranking. And I started seeing fish out here pretty deep, about 28 feet of water. So I've got a drop shot right now. I've got one of our uh, our lunker logs drip, rigged on a drop shot, trying to get these fish that are directly under the boat. What's also good is there's, a, there's another boat over here. Normally I would, be a little bit more you know upset about the situation of like someone just coming in and hopping right next to me and throwing at the spot but I, because i know nothing <laughs> i'm like i'm literally watching them going okay i'm gonna see if they're gonna catch fish right here what they're using i'm getting an education right here so i, I don't mind it at all but we're seeing fish that are sticking under the boat i could see them in my real-time sonar window and they're directly behind or right next to some hard cover out here in deep water. So it makes me think they have to be largemouth. There's a chance it could be white bass. I'll break out a spoon here in a minute, but right now we're getting some really good reeds just below the boat. I just want to know what you are. Bass, spotted bass, largemouth, white bass. Well, we've abandoned our shallow water cranking. Um, I'm not gonna do any flipping up there. So much brush, it is just a jungle. And a lot of it is deep underwater. What I've noticed, a lot of the boat activity and just the, the graph activity in general is out deep, like close to 30 feet of water. And I'm gonna try fishing some of these offshore points. Things I can see on the, on the graph. And I've been going out there and marking bait and uh, just found some bass that are off of a point. It is time for the first time this year for me to get out that summertime ball and chain Carolina rig. It's one of the classic deep water fishing techniques. It's just easy to keep your bait on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a one ounce tungsten weight, thread that on, go to a swivel, barrel swivel, and then you tie a knot on that. That's the first knot. Just tying a little uni knot there. 15 pound Guggen fluoro on the main line. Cut that. Really simple. So you got your big weight, keep it on the bottom, then your barrel swivel. Then you want to cut yourself a leader. I'm also using 15 pound. Guggen Squad fluorocarbon right here. I usually like to get about two to two and a half foot for a Carolina rig. So tie your next knot, 
Another uni knot on the other side of that barrel swivel. And the reason that I'm wanting to go to this Carolina rig is because I saw a lot of the fish really close to the bottom. But this is a, a four-aught hammer hook that you can get at shopcarls.com. These fit our uh, trench hogs, mondo worms, crack and craws, bandito bugs. The four and five lots fit really well. The, the fours are for your smaller baits, craws, bugs, things like that. And then this five aught really fits our mondo worm and the trench hog really good. This is a great summertime offshore fishing bait. It's got a lot of appendages, those long kicking legs, just big profile. Fish like big profiles post spawn summer. As a general rule, go bigger baits post spawn smaller baits during the springtime want to rig that up Tex texas rig style where that hook just sits right on top of the bait and then we have these ribs on all of our guggen baits you just kind of skin hook into one and that'll prevent it from popping out into some cover and then here's the most advantageous part of this whole situation this season we wanted to come up with another lfg series uh, rod in the big sexy line with favorite and we came out with an eight foot rod it's an eight foot medium heavy rod and uh, it's a fast action what this means is you're going to fling your baits out there with an eight foot you're getting so much leverage if you've ever tried to cast a carolina rig you've got like two and a half foot three foot of leader almost impossible with a six and a half seven foot rod you get up to seven two seven three seven four seven five gets a little easier eight foot makes it very easy so this is the rod i like to use for deep swim baits uh throwing like big jig head swim baits offshore deep crank baits and then carolina rigs football jigs things like that that's what it's designed for so really get your bait out there far so here we go. Hopefully we've got a Mondo hook set with this big eight foot rod. Whoop! Just now hit the water. Oh, there's a bite. Ah, daggummit. Give me the old tap tap. At this point, I've completely switched sides of the lake and I'm dragging some rocks, or I'm going to drag some rocks as soon as I get a little deer sausage. Out deep, about 20 to 25 feet of water. Tried the shallows, tried all that, the typical stuff. This lake, y'all, to me, it just, it hates me. It is my nemesis. I'm gonna figure it out. And I, I hope you enjoy the journey of these times where I'm not catching them, because one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna slay out here. But someone is on the water right now. He's been up to the Guggen HQ. We got him hooked up on some trench hogs, and he's already caught some five, six pounders. They're slaying out here today. Somewhere on the water right now, it is going off. It's just not in this boat. No, at least the deer sausage is good. All right, give me that dangler. This is, uh, this is really the complete opposite of fishing deep. Look who I found. The old white bass. Where have you been all day? Grow up. Put in the grease, sir. 
finally found some fish. Finally found some fish. I was literally going in. And I was like, you know what? No, we should just get a little bit, just a little bit more taste. Found some good rocks. Got in a brush pile or something nasty. Got stuck in it. Line just goes, boom, starts taking off. I set the hook, line breaks. Lost my entire Carolina rig. I gotta get back in there. Population out here, strong. It's like Water World. And I'm Kevin Costner. Out here on pontoons, jet skis, skeeters. There's fish freaks out. Switch it up, switch it up to a Mondo worm. Try to get in there and not just jab my Carolina rig weight into the cover in that one. It, it tapped it and then I was waiting for him and then he, he pulled off with it, that was my fault. <sighs> Got something, something's happening out here. Right now there's a 32, 33 pound sack being caught somewhere in deep water. I know this because there's pictures being sent to us. <laughs> Tapped it. They're tapping it. That one could have been a bluegill. Still got me excited though. Finally got one. Oh, it feels good too. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, no, it's not that big, but it's a nice fish. Ooh. Yeah, baby! Oh, feels good trying to pick this fish out. These are the good ones out here. Oh, God, that's just a personal good feeling right there, y'all. Mondo worm, top of the nose, blind in one eye. Got broke off on a sea rig. I'll throw back out there with the Mondo. I'm figuring out some good little hardcover places. That's a nice fish. It's not a giant six, seven, eight pounder, but it's it's a nice three and a half, three and three quarters fish. Yes, gotta give you a sniff, baby. Oh, I'm literally shaking because I've just been working so hard to try to figure something out, and I know the potential out here. God, that's why I put everything down to go bass fishing today. I saw the potential. I wanted to kind of dabble with crappie. I'm just, I'm gonna keep fishing this lake until I figure it out, y'all. Let's let this guy go, I might get another one. <sighs> Thank you, I needed you. I needed you so much. Back into the deeps. Yes! Fish came in about 20 feet of water, hard bottom. <sighs> Typical summertime deal. Big worms, big creature baits, like the Mondo worm and trench hog. It's good things right now, so I gotta fire it back out there. That's That would honestly be a good way to end today's video, but I gotta, I gotta explore it a little bit more. Okay, I've had a few more casts out here. Nothing so far. I did find a brush pile, and I think that's where I had that other fish break off, but we're gonna take it into the HQ right now and then wrap it up. I am fueled right now, though to come back out, out here and explore more of this stuff. I'm just gonna dial in on the graph and find a bunch of spots. I may not even fish for an entire day. Just boom, 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 boom. Start calculate mode and then come back and fish all of these spots hard and figure out the juice.
see if we got anybody in the store right now. Alrighty, it was good to meet some of you up here at the HQ today. If y'all want to stop by, we're up here on 2345 Nail Road in Crum, Texas. And some of us come up here and we work the store every once in a while, so you just might get to hang out with us. We've got PB photos, we've got special story photos, especially if you've caught your PB or big bass on Guggen Baits, we want to see it. Come up here, bring your photos, post it on the brag board. Make sure to subscribe right here if you want to see more dangling y'all and we're going to continue into some of this offshore structure fishing. Uh, I wanted to get into this little crappie dangle today but I got, well, as soon as I started seeing some of the bass that were being caught today and the, the, the size, I just wanted to dial that in and uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see more of that. But right now I got to head to somewhere tropical, we're doing some saltwater fishing, something I have not done in a year and a half so i'm excited to get back do a couple saltwater videos and then get back on them bass out deep thank you all for tuning in today make sure to subscribe right here so you don't miss a single dangle hit the like button and i'll see y'all